The Theory of the Four Humors Hippocrates of Cos, 5th century before Christ Hippocrates, a Greek physician who was born on the island of Cos, Greece, in 460 before Christ and died in 337 before Christ, has been considered the father of medicine for using evidence-based practices at the time when illnesses were often explained solely by supernatural explanations such as falling out of favor with the gods or possession by demonic entities. Hippocrates held that the body should be treated as a whole and not as a series of parts. He maintained that the process of natural healing could be obtained by rest, proper diet, fresh air and bodily cleansing. The theory of humus is set out in the Hippocratic Corpus work on the nature of man, Perificius Anthropi. On the nature of man is attributed to Polybius, son-in-law and disciple of Hippocrates through a testimony in Aristotle's History of Animals. However, the authorship has been considered of doubtful origin. The theory comes from the fact that, when analyzing a drop of blood, Hippocrates rules as follows. The red part of the fresh blood is very liquid. The white particles are phlegm. The yellow foam is the yellow bile. The dense part is the black bile. Here we see for the first time a very clear expression of the idea that the nature of man consists of four humors and that the properties of each of them correspond to each of the four seasons, each of them predominating in the season which shares the same nature. Blood, hot and moist, predominates in spring, yellow bile, hot and dry, in summer, black bile, cold and dry, in autumn, and phlegm, cold and moist in winter. Good health is defined as the balance and mixture of humors, while their imbalance and separation is the cause of disease. To avoid this imbalance, the physician recommends to modify the regime according to the seasons. The predominance of humors varies not only according to the seasons, but also according to age. Theophrastus of Areses, 4th century before Christ. Theophrastus of Areses, born around 372 before Christ, state in his treatise Systema Nature, a main wall on the classification of plants and animal blood with curative properties, that those individuals with a lot of blood are sociable, those with a lot of phlegm are calm, those with a lot of yellow bile are choleric, and those with a lot of black bile are melancholic. The importance of the humors in temperament and their classification was thus established. Galen, 2nd to 3rd century AD. Galen was born in Pergamon in 129 AD and died in Rome between 201 and 216. He was a Greek physician, surgeon, and philosopher in the Roman Empire. Galen established in On the Doctrines of Hippocrates and Plato the correspondence between the humors and the seasons. As for the ages and seasons, the child corresponds to spring, the young man to summer, the mature man to autumn, and the old man to winter. Galen uses this new correspondence to create a relationship between the elements, fire, air, water and earth, and the humors, and, above all, a relationship between humors and character. There is a distinction between humors, not only by color, but also by taste. Blood is sweet, yellow bile is bitter, black bile is acid, and phlegm is salty. Ibn Sina, 10th to 11th century. Abyssina, known in the Muslim world as Ibn Sina, was an Islamic philosopher and physician Persian, born in 981 in Afshana, now Uzbekistan, and died in 1037. Avicenna developed extensively in the canon of medicine or al canon fi al tip the study of human health, dealing in the first volume with the humans among all the things and seasons and the climate and their influence on human health. Here is a quick enumeration of the seasonal afflictions. Spring, when it retains its characteristics, it is the most favorable season. However, a number of ailments occur during this season, after effects of winter illnesses, disturbances of the gallbladder, rhinopharyngeal ailments such as diphtheria, garotal disease, etc., bronchitis, hemoptysis. This season is favorable for children. Winter, 
favorable for digestion but also favorable for diseases due to overload. Winter illnesses are essentially affections of the pituitary. Colds are frequent, sometimes complicated by pleurisy and pneumonia, laryngitis, throat affections, coastal and dorsal neuralgias, neurological affections, chronic headaches, and even apoplexy and comas. It is a favorable season for the elderly. Summer Heat dissolves the humors and decreases the internal activity by excess of degradation, probable allusion to the loss of water resulting from the excess of heat. Blood and pituitary decrease while yellow bile is excessive. Typical of this season are anemias due to the decrease of blood elements, asthenia, infected and extensive sores, enteritis, diarrhea, ascites, tertian and other fevers, otitis and conjunctivitis, epidemics, smallpox, measles and skin eruptions. It's a favorable season for the elderly. Autumn predisposes to numerous diseases due to sudden variations in temperature and excessive consumption of fruits and unhealthy foodstuffs. Favorable for the elderly at the beginning and unfavorable at the end. The following conditions are typical of autumn. Scabies, mixed fevers, splenomegaly, rheumatism, sciatica, cystitis, urethritis, enteritis, intestinal worms, unfavorable for tuberculous pulmonary lesions, which the season may reveal. Climate is linked to health. Hildegard von Bingen, 11th to 12th century. The German abbess Hildegard von Bingen was born in 1098 and died in 1179 and is known as the Sibyl of the Rhine. Hildegard's medical concepts are adapted to the traditional theory of humors. According to this, she writes, men sometimes contract great diseases from anger, because when the humors of yellow bile and black bile are stirred up, their opposite effects make him ill. Between 1151 to 1158, she wrote her works on medicine. Her extensive writings on medicine fall under two titles, Physica, also known as Book of Simple Medicine and Book of Complex Medicine, also known as Causa et Cure. Her works act as a medical recipe book in which Hildegard sets out the study of simple curative substances, plants, animal substances and minerals. She also describes diseases, their etiology, symptoms and how to treat them by means of compound curative substances. Hildegard does not limit herself to describing the causes or symptoms of each of these diseases but offers a collection of recipes, some of which are taken from folk medicine, to which she adds her own recipes. For this purpose, she made use of the crops from her medicinal garden in the monastery. Hildegard describes the medical concepts of her century in natural language. In accordance with the theory of humans, she gives each plant the corresponding qualification of its quality robustus, siccus, calidus, aridus, humidus, etc., classifying the plants according to their temperament or character present in the plant as in the person and their wet, dry, warm and cold components. She adds to these the viriditas or vigor of her own invention. The humors in Hildegard are dry phlegm, outflow of the heat of the fire and corresponding to the red blood cells, moist phlegm, outflow of moisture from the air corresponding to the blood plasma, foamy phlegm, outflow of water corresponding to platelets and phlegm, cold, outflow of soil corresponding to the white blood cells. Hildegard recommends the following actions. Vary food according to the season of the year. Cleanse the organism according to cleansing procedures, such as bloodletting, cupping, fasting and moxibustion. Examples of phytotherapy for moods include the use of rose and sage for cholera and lavender for melancholy. Paracelsus, 15th to 16th century. Theophrastus von Bastus von Hohenheim, 1493-1541, adopted the nickname Paracelsus to indicate that he had surpassed Celsus, the most famous physician of antiquity alongside Kellen and Hippocrates. He was a fierce opponent of the prevailing Galenism, he considered the four elements and the four humors to be secondary, and he attributed the greatest importance to the principles of the alchemists, sulfur, mercury and salt. All beings, according to alchemy, were made up of mercury, the volatile principle. 
sulfur, the principle of combustibility, and salt, that which remains after combustion. The archaeos, or inner alchemist, act on sulfur, mercury, and salt. If the archaeos did not succeed in harmonizing them, semicrystalline deposits, tartar, arose, aromatic diseases, lithiasis, good, and inflammation of the joint, which Paracelsus considered tartaric diseases, appeared. The Western world today the theory of humus was in full force until the 18th century. Subsequently, with the advancement of certain knowledge about the organs and the successes of bacteriology, which Robert Koch greatly influenced, this theory was abandoned in the West and has even come to be rejected and mocked. Humus in the East Yunani Medicine Yunani or Yunani medicine, from Urdu Tiv Yunani, is a term for traditional Persian Arabic medicine as practiced in Mughal India and Muslim culture in South Asia and present day Central Asia. The term Yunani means Greek, as the Persian Arabic system of medicine was based on the teachings of the Greek physicians Hippocrates and Galen. The Hellenistic origin of Yunani medicine is still visible because it is based on the four classical humors. Phlegm of Balham, Blood of Presa, Yellow Vile, Safra, and Black Vile, Sauda. But it has also been influenced by Indian and traditional Chinese systems. Ayurveda. Emerging in India more than 5,000 years ago, it can be translated from Sanskrit as science of life and is based on the integration of body, mind and spirit. It affirms, among other things, that there is an equivalent and a profound relationship between the universe or macrocosm and the person or microcosm. Its philosophical basis is governed by the theory of the five elements ether, air, fire, water and earth and the three dosha, vata, pitta and kapha. The three doshas, or humors, are basic forces that interact and are present in the organism of all people. The doshic or mind-body constitution is the manifestation of the predominance of these forces in our being. They represent a map of our areas of strength and also areas of weakness that will lead to the deterioration of our time. Two monotypes are Vata. This is the expression of the force of movement. People of Vata constitution tend to be active, intelligent, restless and creative. The complexion is thin, with prominent bones and tendons and dry, cold skin. Sleep and appetite are irregular. They react to stress with insomnia, fear and anxiety. Pitta. This is the expression of transformation. Those with predominance of Pitta show great intellectual interest and are more executive. Body proportions are intermediate and the limbs are warm. Perspiration is easy and appetite and digestion are strong. They react with anger and irritability to daily imbalances. Kapha This is the expression of stability and structure. Kapha people are methodical and thoughtful, react calmly and are little affected by stress. They have a solid body, constitution with smooth complexion, thick, greasy hair. Appetite and digestion are slow and steady, and they have a tendency to sleep a lot. Diet, physical activity, daily routines and mental harmony techniques are four pillars that help us to tune the inner forces to maintain the balance which is, by definition, unstable. There are two Vata Pitta, Fitta Kapha and Kapha Vata types as well as a triple Vata Pitta Kapha type. In-depth study of the four humors, the humors, blood, phlegm, yellow bile and black bile, each correspond to one of the traditional four temperaments. Based on Hippocratic medicine, it was believed that the four humors had to be in balanced proportions with respect to the amount and strength of each humor for a body to be healthy. Imbalance of the humors, or dyscrasia, was thought to be the direct cause of all disease while health was associated with a balance of humors or eucrasia. The elimination of the humors by the organism can be observed during illness, blood, phlegm or mucus from the nose, vomiting, fecal matter, urine and sweat, and the condition usually disappears after reaching crisis with expulsion of one of the humors. The four humors of Hippocratic medicine are black bile, melena holy, yellow vial, chante holy, phlegm or phlegma, and blood or ema, 
Later scholars mixed the theory of humors with the four elements described by Empedocles in the 5th century before Christ personality, diseases, and factors related to each humor. Blood, element, air, season, spring, age, childhood, condition, temperate and humid, temperament, sanguine, type, artisan. In this case, the sanguine mood predominates. The traits of the sanguine temperament are self-confidence, cheerfulness, optimism, good humor, expressiveness, and sociability. The sanguine is open, interested in his environment, active, enterprising. They are courageous, hopeful, and loving, but also thoughtless, fickle, and carefree. His emotional life is easily inflamed, and he has a tendency to flee with a short duration in his actions. Also in the physical, it is predominantly light, easily inflamed, easily excitable, and short-lived. It is related to the organ of the heart. Yellow vial Element fire, season summer, age youth, condition temperate and dry, temperament choleric, type guardian, represents those who have a large amount of yellow bile. This gives rise to a passionate temperament with enormous vitality and given to anger very easily. It tends to show a bad temper. The choleric is fiery, explosive, impatient, irritable, angry and sensitive. In interhuman relations, he is dominant, has a guiding function and is a conqueror. It has a strong will. Physical processes are carried out in the same marked, uncertain, precise, painful, abrupt, dangerously vehement and aggressive manner. It is related to the organ of the liver and gallbladder. Excess of yellow bile was thought to produce aggression and an excess of reciprocal anger causing liver disorders and imbalances in the humors. Black bile, element earth, season autumn, age adult, condition cold and dry, temperament melancholic, type idealistic, characterizes those who have a predominance of black bile in their organism. They have a sad temperament, rather susceptible and given to artistic activities. They are depressed, drowsy and depressive. The melancholic is pensive, full of fears, sorrows, afflictions and worries, full of feelings of guilt, susceptibility. He has a strong sense of responsibility, a feeling of duty, scrupulous conscientiousness and depth of thought. Love solitude, seclusion, silence. The predominance of the physical, also crystalline, salty, is expressed everywhere. In the physical, then, the heavy, cold, dry, hard, solid, but also weak, slow, hardening, destined to extinction, to death, reigns proportionally. It is related to the organ of the spleen. Depression was attributed to the excess or unnatural black bile secreted by the spleen. Phlegm, element water, season winter, age old age, condition cold and damp, temperament phlegmatic, type rational, characterizes those who have a predominance of phlegm in their organism. Phlegmatic people are thoughtful, fair, calm and committed and lazy. The phlegmatic is calm and indifferent, balanced, always satisfied, uninterested, cordial, good-natured, faithful and constant. He is slow of action and cold-blooded. Correspondingly, the physical processes have a tendency towards slow, sluggish, wet fresh, thickening, slow-flowing, but still able to function. It is related to the brain and lung organ, case of tumors, chlorosis, traumatism and cacochemia. Healing methods according to the humor theory. The healing methods according to the humor theory are as follows and are used for the correct balance of humors. Phytotherapy, balancing food according to the seasons, bloodletting, emetic or provoked vomiting, purges, moxifustion, chewed medicines called apophlegmatics, for expulsion of humors and phlegm.